Now, um, what happens to a lot of folks is they get sick, they're running a fever, they don't feel well, and you go to the doctor. And the doctor says, let's put you on this antibiotic. Um, and the doctor doesn't do a culture swab. The doctor doesn't run labs. Um, it just says, well, it's probably bacterial. Let's put you on that antibiotic. Well, if it's not bacterial, and you go on that antibiotic, that antibiotic is going to tank your immune system even, even further. So it's all, I always recommend if you're going to the doctor to get some type of investigation done, then make sure they investigate. Um, because the doctor's not going to know whether it's bacterial or viral without adequate testing. And there's plenty of testing. There's blood tests that can be done. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite is just a general CBC. A CBC, a complete blood count. Sometimes what you'll see on a complete blood count is white blood cells will be elevated. That indicates an infection. It doesn't indicate what kind of an infection. Then you can look at there's different kinds of white blood cells. So if you have elevation of what are called neutrophils, this is commonly associated with bacteria. If you have an elevation of lymphocytes, this is typically associated with a viral infection. Again, these are, these are just insights. It's not 100% definitive, but if your doctor's at least doing this much, this may help him make a decision to say, no, this neutrophils are super high. Um, and your symptoms match bacterial infection. So that's just one mechanism. Now they can also do a swab, a culture. Cultures can be done of your, you know, you can do a nasal culture. If, if you have an upper respiratory infection, it's probably the easiest type to do. And generally those can identify different types of bacteria um, that might be the culprit at hand. And then the lab tests are a little bit better to, to differentiate um, you can do different kinds of antibody tests for different types of viruses, but you know there's and there's three main types of antibodies that your doctor can measure: IgG, IgA, and IgM. Um, and so those all can point to you know viral versus bacterial infection. And you want to get as much crystal clarity around this because if you have a bacterial infection, an antibiotic might be worthwhile for you to use. If you have a viral infection, though, an antibiotic would be the wrong move, and all it would really do is serve to wipe out your microbiome and make your immune system more susceptible to recurring infections throughout the season. So keep those things in mind. Test, don't guess. Make sure your doctor's doing the work of testing to get you the best if you're considering that antibiotic because, uh, again, there are lots of natural things that you can do, even with a bacteria, vitamin C, high doses of vitamin C, high doses of zinc, high doses of... Uh, vitamin D, high doses of N-acetylcysteine, and we'll talk about my, the immune protocol alternatives that I, that I like to recommend people um, investigate um, in lieu of something like this, or in, even in lieu of, uh, of an um, antiviral, because those, 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 those chemical medicines don't come without consequence sometimes. And just make sure, too, that your doctor, if he's giving you something like that, that you talk about the risks. What are the risks? Um, what are the side effect potentials for these, uh, for these medications? Because if, you're, if your condition isn't life-threatening, then it's, it's more important to understand those risks. If you're just uncomfortable and you're just not feeling well, but the situation's not life-threatening, then you don't want to necessarily take a powerful medication that has... A, serious risks. Remember, it's all about informed consent so that you can make your best decision. And we'll get into some alternatives here in just a minute. Okay. Now, one of the things, I'll just say this. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll draw it. So, um, a lot of people want to do this. They want to put one of these right in the arm. And, um, you know, when you're sick, doing this isn't going to help. Um, and even before you get sick, I know they push this a lot, you know, like in September and, and October and the early before everybody's really dropping. Um, but if you, if you look at, at the CDC's own website about this, they're going to tell you they don't, they don't really work and they can't really predict it. But there's also... There's also adjuvants in this, and those adjuvants 
can be problematic to people's immune systems. So I highly encourage you to look, look and read more about those, but look at, at some of these alternatives, these tried and true alternatives that are ancient uh, and that they're just com really just common sense. So let's talk about um, what I would do. If I, so if I had a cold or flu and I were sick, these are the things that I would do. I would be on vitamin C, five grams or more a day until I got better. Um, and when I say more, it, like I mentioned earlier, bowel tolerance. Zinc, let's change my color here. Um, zinc, we would do 50 milligrams a day. NAC, we'd do 1,500. Uh, if I felt really bad, I'd do 3,000, but uh, 1,500 a day. Quercetin, quercetin, I'm doing two grams minimum, two to four, but uh, two. Vitamin A, I'm doing 12,500 IU. Now, what you can do with vitamin A is you can do it, you can load it. So you can take it this way per day, but you can also take just a bolus uh, and just do this one time. But you can take a bolus dose of 100,000 IU. Uh, just again, it's just one dose. Vitamin A is very, very powerful immune um, immune supporting nutrient. And then I would definitely do vitamin D. You know, what coincides with cold and flu season is, is the sun goes away, right? We have less sun exposure, but I would do 150,000 units times three days. So 150,000 units per day for three days is the way I would do that. Um, just heavy, heavy hit. And then I would also take lysine. And lysine, um, you know, when you're sick, one of the things that lysine is known for, especially, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have a virus, is it blocks viral replication. It inhibits viral replication. We see this with, like, HPV. If any of you have ever had a herpes virus where you got fever, blisters, or cold sores um, and went over the counter to look for remedies, number one ingredient for for viral blisters or cold sore is lysine. Lysine's very well established as being a uh, very effective at helping with, you know, with 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 virus replication. So reducing its ability. Viruses. It's a whole thing. We'll do. We'll talk more in depth about it. But lysine basically, um, it interferes with arginine uptake into viruses. Now viruses need arginine for their replication. So lysine kind of acts as an arginine antagonist. Um, and in that regard, starves out viruses. And so if you are supplementing with high doses of arginine and you're sick, you definitely, if you have a viral infection, you want to maybe stop that um, until you get over it because lysine, um, because when you're on a high dose of arginine, it will lower your lysine levels and it will make you more potentially more susceptible. But lysine, very effective as an antiviral um, it, it inhibits viral replication. And then up here, I've, I've talked about a botanical nutrient blend. What are we referring to? Elderberry, one of my favorites, and Andrographis, also one of my favorites. The combination of these two um, with all these other things, hit it hard, hit it hard up front. What, what I, this is what I would do, and generally when I do this, you know, I don't have any downtime. Um, I might just feel bad for a day, but I don't have any downtime. And, you know, nobody wants to be down a week or two weeks. And what I've heard a lot here in the last month is people will say, well, I've been down and, uh, you know, my, I, I got over it, but I'm still just on the floor. I'm still just sluggish. What, am, what do I do when, I'm, when I have kind of a post uh, infection, just malaise and fatigue that, that I just feel like I can't overcome? The number one way to overcome that um, is going to be this right here. If you haven't done this, you know, and with some of you are saying, how do I do that? I live, you know, I live in Alaska or I live somewhere where the sun's not shining right now or where it's so cold we can't get out. But this is it. This is the best way to overcome that linger these two things. So basically, what does that mean? It means go outside. 
because you get both sunshine and fresh air when you're walking outside. So even if you're bundled up um, to try to keep warm, you can still go outside, get sunshine and fresh air. But if you're really struggling, you know, sunshine and fresh air uh, aggressively can be very, very helpful. A lot of people too, we see post, post viral syndrome, you know, that malaise fatigue again, suspect mold exposure in your house. So if you have any signs of water damage or you smell any must coming out of the closet, that kind of thing, mold and mycotoxins, specifically the mycotoxins, inhibit immune function. So right, they, they, they will cave your immune system and make you more susceptible. They also are very inflammatory and they could damage your muscles and make you just tired, brain foggy, and unable to function. And what happens to a lot of people is when they get sick, they stay home. And if there's mold in the home, they stay home to recover. If there's mold in the home, they're being exposed to more of that mold while they're staying at home. And so that immune system is just going down and that inflammation is just going up and then they just can't seem to shake it. So um, again, it doesn't mean that everybody with this has a mold problem, but if you do and you're doing these things and you're like, why am I not getting better? This right here, I have seen this so much since 2020, uh, more than I care to see because it's, you know, it's never bad. It's never good news when you got mold in your home. Oh, on this note, on this last note, those of you who want to get access to all my dosing and what I would do on, uh, if I were sick, I mean, all the exact doses and everything else, We'll put a link up below this video for you in the show notes as well as in the comments to, um, to go and read more about uh, my immune protocol and what I do.